Time to move over H502S. Your big brother's just come to town. Welcome to this review of the Hubsan X4 H501SS Advanced. Hello and welcome back if you are a current subscriber or hello if you're new to my channel, but please do subscribe. Um, this is the H501 SS Advanced. Now, um, it's the Advanced because it uses the Advanced TX, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But um, if you're wondering what the difference is between the H501 SS and the H501 S is, then visually nothing really. Um, the main difference is inside, and that is that the main board on the 501 SS is the same as the H501A, which depending upon when you're watching this, is either out or it's just about to come out. There is a very confusing Hubsan official video on the differences, but the main board is the biggest difference. Um, if you are flying this with the H7000 controller, which um, uh, includes waypoints and circle me, I believe that is one of the reasons why they changed the main board because the previous firmwares that they were pushing out to the older model weren't quite as reliable. So that's the main difference. So it's the innards, it's the main board from the 501A. Apart from that, pretty much everything else exactly the same apart from the firmware upgrades. So let's move on. So a very quick look at what we get in the box. We get the obligatory user manual. We get a two cell uh, 2700 mAh 7.4 volt uh, LiPo, LiPo battery. Uh, and that's for the um, 501S. We get a charger, we get a balance charger here. Um, it's quite basic, but it's functional. Uh, we get a propeller tool. We get a um, AA battery um, compartment to go in the TX unit. I've taken that one out and I've put a LiPo, LiPo battery in there. And then we get a spare set of propellers. So that's the um, box contents out of the way. Let's move on to the 501S itself. Now, I was originally going to be comparing this to the H502S throughout this video. However, as soon as I took it out of the box, I realized that it was a bit of an unfair comparison. They are um, similar in their functionality, but that's pretty much where it stops. The construction of this is much, much better. Um, of course, it does carry a, um, a higher price tag for that. But even uh, visually, I'll post up a graphic in a moment just so that you can have a look at the difference between the two uh, size-wise. But just touching it, uh, the weight of it is a lot more robust. It, it does, of course, come with uh, brushless motors compared to the 502S, which is brushed all round. There's a few things I'm not too keen on. I don't really like this um, uh, gold uh, shield on here, but that's obviously a question of choice. The um, difference on the camera module as well compared to the 501S is that this one, the lens does stick out slightly on the front here, and I'm not entirely sure why that is because I was led to believe that the video module is identical to this between the two models. But I've put in a call to Hubsan, I'm waiting for them to get back to me. And if it's of any interest, then I'll post it up in the description. Um, functionality wise, it does have GPS hold, it does have altitude hold. Um, they can be operated independently. It also has follow me, which is very good. And I'll show you that in a video a little bit later on. And it has returned home by pairing up the satellites to the TX unit. The battery that you get in here um, is good for about 20 minutes of, um, of flight and I can confirm that it does give you that full time. It's not just a manufacturer's claim. So um, moving on to the TX unit, let's just have a look at that quickly and um, then we can take this out for a flight. Now, one of the main reasons for buying the advanced version of the 501 SS is that you get this H906A uh, TX unit. Um, it's a very good, um, good controller, and in my opinion, it's much better than the standard one that you get, although you are, of course, paying a premium for that. Uh, there's a couple of buttons that don't do anything, the T1 and T2. Uh, we've obviously got the uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna on the left there for your drone control, and then we have a directional 5.8 there for the FPV. Um, button wise, the A button on here, that is to put you into headless mode. You've got the B button over here, that does the follow me. GPS can either be on or off if you just want to use altitude hold, just leave that down. Um, and then you've got the return to home button, which of course does need to be used in conjunction with the GPS. 
Uh, apart from that, we have a video out here if you want to use FPV goggles. Usual trimmer buttons on here. The exit button here, you press that briefly to put you into photograph mode. And the enter button there, you press that briefly to start your video recording. You get this uh, sun shield. You will notice, of course, that the uh, LCD on here is noticeably smaller than that that you get on the uh, standard controller. And I'll post a picture up here to, so you can have a look at the size difference. It's about an inch smaller. Um, you can, if you want, actually put a, um, a larger video unit which can be connected to here, but that is well is an aftermarket option. Okay, so I'm going to quickly show you how to get this thing up and running and uh, just take you through the menu option. We've got the um, 501S turned on now. On the display here, it comes up with Calibrate Compass 1. And to do that, we'll just turn it around a few times until that goes out and changes to Calibrate Compass 2, which will be done in probably in about half a dozen turns. There we go. And now we do it vertically, like so. And we are ready. Now it's beeping at the moment because it has no GPS signal and it won't fly without a GPS signal either. But um, if we turn down the uh, left throttle lever there, press and hold, and then move down to fly when no GPS and press enter and then exit out of there, we should be good to go. And that is it. Um, the other options or the display on here will tell you about your pitch, height, roll, um, distance from you, etc., etc. But um, you do have to calibrate it each time before you start flying it. Okay, that is it. Let's take it out for a flight. Okay, so we're taking the 501S out for a flight now. It's not the best of days, but um, we'll see how we get on. The wind is probably about 8 to 10 miles an hour. It's a 501S started up, we've already paired it up, we've got 12 satellites on both the drone and the controller, so let's take it up and see how we get on. It's fighting against the wind a little bit. Check the uh, GPS hover mode. We just put the camera on now. And away we go. The stated range on here is about 300 meters. We're not going to do that today because it is a bit too windy, but. Um, I've had it out to about 200 metres so far. I'll post up some footage that I took on a much brighter day, just to give you an idea on how good it looks. Might be a good time to check out the headless mode. I'm just going to flick that on now. We'll turn it round. Take it out headless mode now. Send it out, give it a bit of distance. Now we're going to flick on the uh, returned home mode and see how accurate that is. starting to come back. Be interesting to see how that uh, how that performs in the wind that we've got here. It does gain a bit of altitude if it's under 
10 metres. It will go up to 10 metres initially before it does anything else, but that's just coming in, hovering overhead. <clears throat> I'm not going to do anything, I'm just going to wait and see where it actually lands here. And there we go, that's pretty much exactly where it, uh, where it took off from. Okay, we're just going to take that up now and we'll uh, just check the follow me mode. Straight away, turning around. So as you can see, I'm not touching the controller at all. Moving in, moving out, yeah that seems to work very well. Okay this time I'm just going to give it a bit of distance on the uh, on the flight and that'll be us done today. Height wise we're looking at about fifty odd meters. Push that up a little bit more. And it's just saying that the battery is low, so we'll just flick on the return to home. And hopefully we'll have enough juice left to get us back down again. So in summary, do I like the H501 SS? Yes, I like it a lot. I'm not sure that I like it quite as much as the uh, 502S for um, the fun factor, but having said that, it's a different model altogether. The quality of the um, video footage, as you would have seen, is very good. Not perfect, but very good. Um, and when I say it's not perfect, it's because it does struggle when it's doing bank turns or if there are color variances which it um, struggles to keep up with. But apart from that, I love the follow me. I love the GPS return to home as well, and it does work particularly well. Um, as for the H906A controller over the standard one, I think that's worth the extra investment. That too, not perfect. I'm not entirely sure that I like the fact that the LCD screen here is smaller than the standard controller. But having said that, it is something that you can learn to live with. I like the fact the antennas are built on the body here and that you don't have to drill into it. There's a video that I'll post a link to down below uh, by Dustin Dunhill, and he's managed to get this um, model up to a uh, three kilometer range, which is quite insane and something that I wouldn't personally try. Um, but it is very good and well worth a watch. Do I, like, um, do I like this enough to endorse it? Yes, I do. Certainly, I think if you're in the market for a drone which has got very good um, uh, video footage and also it's got these other things such as um, GPS, return to home and follow me, highly recommended. Um, thank you for watching. This has been a PDH review of the Hubsan H501 SS Advanced. Uh, please do subscribe and please keep on following for videos in the future. Thanks for now.
Now, when I'm making these videos, even though I'm sat around a table at the moment, when I go outside and sometimes when I'm recording them, not everything goes according to plan. So for the first time, I'm just going to pop up a couple of bloopers at the end of here just for a little bit of fun. Um, I hope you enjoy them. I do enjoy making these videos, but sometimes things don't go quite how I'd like them to be. It's time to move over H502S because your big brother's just come to town. We should be able to arm the motors. No, we can't because time to move over. <clears throat> you just turn the 501S in a clockwise direction on a level and then when it comes around to calibrate compass 2 you do it a horrible just a mood. now I was originally gonna be oh, Thank <laughs> you.